Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another exciting session here at the AI Summit. This is a truly global uh, event, and we have our good friend Thomas Isnar, who's based in Paris. Welcome, Thomas. Great to have you here. Hi. Thomas, Thank you. Has a, we have a great mutual friend in common um, at Pernod Ricard, a lady named Laura, who, as soon as she found out about this conference, she's like, you have to have Thomas at the conference. And so I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm thrilled that she recommended you. Um, because what you're going to talk about now is fundamental to success with AI, which is data. So I think you've got a video that you want to share with us first that I think will be valuable for everyone in the travel industry to see just how important data actually is for the travel experience. Yes. Thank you, Dan, for the invitation. Uh, nice to meet you, everyone. So I, I'm going to share with a, a video because a video is worth a, a thousand speech. So just for mm -hmm. me to time, share my screen. Okay, sorry, it's coming. Okay, uh, just before to, to show you the video, we're talking about AI and data, and in fact, data is the, the fuel for AI. But if there is one message I want to, to maybe to transmit is that you, in most of cases, whether you're in travel, uh, hotel management, restaurant, theme parks, venues, you have a lot of data already a lot of data and you can work on this data to leverage and to help you to take the right strategic decisions and, and to manage optimize your revenue and the basic topics is to deal with optimizing revenue with prediction that's great thanks for that thomas so the question i want to ask you and then i'm going to let you take it away with the presentation is how do companies because there's been actually been some great chat on this everyone trying to figure out exactly how you did this and how it worked which i know you'll explain um, but what data do companies need to predict demand and optimize revenue? I will answer. And I see at the same time, there are some questions about data uh, arriving. Um, um, to make it very simple, we basically rely on first party transaction data. It means data that are always available for 100% of your customers whether they booked via the web or whether they went to the to the box office. Um, we very rely on that. So I show you. We are able to do these models tailored to each venue uh, with this must have data. So sell data that you all have, visit access data and product data, product or services, capacity, description, price and everything. And with all this data, we are able to cut by cut Visitor per visitor, packs per packs, we are able to then make an enrichment very powerful with what we call metadata and with, of course, the weather and other data in order to give you an energy of data very powerful to, to model your business. Of course, if you have additional data like marketing, sales events, attractions, clients, CRM, and you name it, we use this data, but the very important thing in order to, to, to be very efficient and to break the rules is this very already accessible, available data. And with this data, we are able to uh, deliver a segmentation. Classically speaking, when we talk about segmentation, we talk about qualitative you know, uh, segmentation. The tribes, the, 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 the adults, uh, I mean, you name it. What we're interested in is to find um, the variables, the data, uh, very often that we create based from your primary data. We create new data and we are able to give you a segmentation very powerful. Why? Because for each segment, we are able to model and to define all these characteristics. We are able to define uh, a ramp up. It means how people buy your experience or buy a ticket, when they come, and how they behave, what is their customer journey, what they spend, what they will do uh, once they're on site. So we got the ramp up, we've got the per cap, which is the total spending per each user. We've got the reliability because we predict uh, one year in advance. Uh, I hesitated to make a gym of the solution, but the timing we have is too short. But uh, uh, after we will be able uh, to, to engage some conversations and to make some demo in order to show you how we are able to predict demand. So sales, a business plan one year 
uh, away. And oh, we are able to predict attendance at the very high accuracy, like three or one month before. So ramp up per cap reliability, what they spend per activity. And when we talk about pricing, a pricing strategy, revenue management, team management, in order to do properly the things, you have to rely on a real scientific and statistical model. And so for each segment, each week, by offer, by type of customer, by geographical origin, we are able to determine a price elasticity and the willingness to pay. And these two informations are really uh, a necessary, mandatory in order to make a right, appropriate pricing strategy. Price elasticity will tell you if you can displace demand or not. And willingness to pay will tell you if this segment is willing for the full package at high price or the single entry ticket, to make it simple. And also, of course, we're able to, to determine the attendance, as I told you, the media plan, and so the global revenue. We also added an algorithm in order to determine what we call the demand intensity. This, as you saw in the reportage, this algorithm is able to tell you when, to which segment, you can push a media plan in order to generate a real return on investment. And the key is, as we are able to predict normally what should happen when you act, when you define, when you implement an action, a plan, we are really able to very precisely, segment by segment, calculate the return on investment done, uh, done on that. So with this simple data, first party data, we are able to make this model and these predictions. And so uh, the, the key thing is to address your pain points. And I, I cannot name all the pain points in the industry, but the important thing is that we are able to answer all these questions. Uh, you, you, you can read them. Uh, I will not uh, maybe list them all, but uh, the, the, the very important thing is by answering these questions, we are able to give you the insight to optimize, of course, the, the, the revenue and the customer loyalty. We are able to give you insight to, to grow your revenue. And also, we are able to uh, give you insight to have a better planning, uh, planning and, and management of your operations. And when you had all this information, all this consulting, plus the SaaS solution, because everything after is monitored in a SaaS solution, you make a, a great, uh, I would say, a counter bleep in terms of performance and, uh, and management. Welcome to Apollo Rocket, is the your AI-powered analyst. But unfortunately, we, we don't have a lot of time, so uh, maybe I will, <laughs> I will keep time for, 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 for for the, the discussion, but I, I mean, I just show you- Welcome to Apollo the, Rocket, your uh, AI-powered uh, analytics uh, to help make better uh, business decisions. Uh, an important, the landing uh, screen uh, shows uh, an overview uh, of main KPIs focusing on sale and visit dates. Here we have weekly figures showing uh, sales in detailed uh, mode or accumulated yeah. view based on the client data. In red, we have the actual, the main idea of- What you see uh, after three weeks, of sales for this theme park, so weeks uh, sales are starting in September, October of the previous year. We are able to say how many people at the end, two million more than two million, they will do at the end. So the blue line is the meta algorithm, which is the prediction, which starts here, as you see, and the red line is the reality. So it's very accurate. And when you go here in the alert system, you know where are the underperforming and overperforming segment in order to, 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 to manage the situation. So that's why it's very, very powerful. We have customers in different sectors uh, in France, but also abroad in Germany, in, uh, in North America. We start in Japan. Uh, and what we propose with this very first party transaction data is to help you to to have a, a, a 360 degree powerful analytics, uh, an attendance prediction, and the module rocket, which is the, 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 the powerful AI in order to determine the better strategy in terms of sales, marketing, pricing, media plan, and operation management, to make it simple. But I think the important thing now is to, I hope it's clear, is to share. And I hope that we really have some, some, some questions to be, to be more, more detailed. I see we have still uh, five minutes, I hope. 
<laughs> we do, and we have a ton of questions. So the first one I'll just address off the top. We'll share the video, we'll share the presentation, um, and we'll try to get as many of these questions in as possible because your video and your discussion lit up both the chat and the Q&A. So let's take five minutes and try and cover as many. A quick one to get out there is GDPR compliancy. Yeah. We natively, I mean, I put just my, my uh, I mean, you will share the, the information, but info at Apollo dot plus tire dot plus, sorry. Uh, sorry for my language. Um, GAPD in, in Europe, you know, we have the the hardest uh, regulation, but this constraint is a very good for us because we constrained to find data in order to model the comp the behavior, the customer journey of 100% of the customers, and that's what we do. And the good thing is that with the disparition of the change in of game with the third party cookies. In order to understand your customers, you will like to rely on first party cookies. So there is this, this switch from third party cookies to first party cookies, which is very, um, I would say, uh, speeding or, or, or development. In other countries, North America, uh, Japan, there is not the same rules. And we are able to take more data, private data, and to play with it. So it's even powerful. Perfect. Uh, Sergio had like three questions. I'm going to try and put them to you um, in one. So he's saying this is amazing for walk-in customers. What about B2B partners? Would they be able to um, make benefit of the analysis? And do you collect a specific waiver from clients to store their data? And is there a data privacy provision to cover this? No need for waiver because um, we only take a first party data. It means that when we retrieve the data, we don't want the name. We don't want the email. We don't want. We just want the address or the, or the, the you know, the the the, 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 the code postal. Sorry for the name. Uh, ah, uh, the, the figures in order to to retrieve the original, uh, the the geographical origin. And after what we do, we do segments. And after the customer is able to make the link between the segments and their customers are some open base. That's how it works. We t we are only thinking about segments. And when we predict, we predict the business. The, the example I, I showed you for Puy Fou, the theme park, we have like 500 different segments, B2C, B2B, and we model and follow them. And when there is a problem, they know that segment has a price elasticity or not. It's high contribution or low contribution, so they can make the choice which kind of customer I want and which action, which plan will really work. Postcode. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Anna. Karin. No, that's good. <laughs> Alex Bainbridge, who's also an expert in this space and will be doing a session this afternoon, has been active in here. One of his questions I wanted to relay is, is this just attendance or does this manage supply within the park? For example, too many people in one part of the attraction and too few in another section. No, it's also planning. Uh, we work for hotels and restaurants and they use our planification algorithm in order to predict three weeks before who will be at lunch we will be at dinner in order to manage the time and the slots. And it's very useful because everywhere in the world, there's a shortage of workforce. And when you're able to give an information, an attendance prediction to workers, to people for the service, they like it. When you give them a tool, they feel like with more value added. So it's a very strong development for us, the planning, operations planning. And at least it was told in the reportage, the Gouffe de Padirac, they spare 20% of cost in terms of HR and also food. Because when you know precisely how many people you will have, you don't spoil with food and over, over capacities. Fascinating. All right. There's a couple more I want to get to with our final minute here. And many people have asked for like a full hour with you. So we have to just do a, a season four podcast and just dive right into it again. But let's, let's cover as much as as much as we can. And it's clear why Laura recommended you. One people, one of the questions was, do you operate outside of France? And I think you address that Japan and Pernod Ricard's yeah. a global company. Yeah. yeah. Um, but who is your business specifically designed to serve? Is it small business, mid-market or enterprise? Today we have restaurants from 50 meals, no 50 seats, till Chateau de Versailles, 8 million visitors a year. We're in travel. We're in hospitality, we are in theme parks and tourist industry. 
So uh, my answer is that we can serve a lot of operations in travel. We deal with aviation. I saw a question uh, of the aviation industry. Um, we are able to, to determine very precisely the price, the pricing strategy for two operators in order when they bid a ticket to, to make the right margin and everything. So basically our solution, we, I mean, important, we started the company 13 years ago. So I'm a dinosaur talking to you, as you can see with my, <laughs> my hair. It was not yeah. easy. And we have a long, long time in research and development to find this. And they work in very different. We started with big players. And after we started to, 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 to go down the other to be able to work with a restaurant, a single restaurant. That's fantastic. We'll have to take the rest of the questions offline. And we'll make sure between Thomas and myself that we'll I would love answer to. all of your questions. I would love um, to. But I, I want to give you the, la the last word here, Thomas, because merci beaucoup for this incredible presentation. It's uh, you, been terrific. But please uh, leave everyone with your words of wisdom on how they can get up to speed or how they can follow up with more information. Very basically, uh, don't be afraid of the quality of your data. Your data is not clean. We know it. Launch something, start. Because uh, the, 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 the thing is that operators sometimes want to two things. They want perfect quality data, which is not possible because it's not possible. And second, you don't know which data is very important, which is really correlated to your demand, your attendance, your revenue. So don't lose time, launch something. The other thing is you need sovereignty about your, about your data. So we guarantee that sovereignty, but uh, even if you have very good data scientists, even if you have some internal research and development, don't easy, I mean, take outside technologies because that's what we do since 13 years. We invested millions on that to answer very complex questions. So let's think about collaboration in order to, to, to change the thing. And let's try it. Uh, let's try it. So sometimes we, you know, and also uh, one last thing is that the news people, operations, managers, they think that they're very different. I know why it works for Chateau de Versailles or for 360 Chicago or for that resort, that mall in, uh, in, uh, in Tokyo. But me, I'm very different. It cannot work for me. It's a natural, it's a rational, a logical uh, behavior, but uh, don't trust that, uh, that bia. For us, it's a bia. Uh, try, think otherwise. That's perfect. Thank you so much for this. Thomas from Apollo Pass. Merci beaucoup, bonsoir. Thank we'll you. speak again soon. Merci beaucoup, Dan. Thank you, everyone. Uh, hope we can have a, another session because I see many questions. They're all very interesting, and I hope that we, we will be able to answer and to connect. Thank you for inviting you. me from the Apollo Plus. Really appreciate it. Of course. Real pleasure. Thank you. Bye for Thank now. You, Catherine. Thank you.